you can see a smooth of an experience this is. I don't have to separately push the container image that I just built to the Octet registry. It's then all in one go. Hello there and thank you so much for joining me for another video of 100 Days of Kubernetes. My name is Anais and you're on my YouTube channel where we explore everything around Kubernetes including projects, concepts, theory, as well as example tutorials. 100 Days of Kubernetes is focused on getting you started with Kubernetes across 100 days. Now today we're going to be looking at developer platforms. What are developer platforms? So why do we need developer platforms in the first place? Developer platforms. Let's make this a bit bigger. So we generally have two different types of users. We have those users who really want to dive into Kubernetes. They are here on this side, let's say, right? And then we have the other type of users who just want to just get, you know what I'm going to write? Done, okay? So we have these different types of users and they are not the same. So we have to address them differently. Here, if you are doing 100 days of Kubernetes, you probably are more into dive into Kubernetes bucket and you want to know the nitty gritty details of Kubernetes. However, in many cases, in most of the cases, people just want to deploy their sites. They just want to deploy their application and have everything working right away. So both users will need different platforms, will need different resources to address their needs. So overall, developer platforms have some goals. Let's summarize them. So deploy quickly and easily. Um, easy management of your application. You shouldn't have to deal with lots and lots of YAML manifests. You shouldn't have to deal with knowing the nitty gritty details of how deployments are happening in Kubernetes and how they are scaled. Remember when we looked at replica sets, when we looked at creating all the separate Kubernetes manifests on developer platforms, the goal is to make it as easy and as straightforward as possible. And uh, easy development. Okay, so we want to have these three different buckets, right? We want to be able to quickly iterate on our existing deployments uh, and change up our production environment and have the different environments where we can uh, ensure that we are developing actually the features that are needed and everything is working correctly, right? So I have tried several different developer platforms and <laughs> some of them have the pitfalls. Let's make here like, a, I don't know, a, pl um, a plus. Let's make here a plus. A lot of them over simplify. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, they make abstractions. They try to make it as simple as possible by making it as simple as possible and introducing their own opinionated resources or naming conventions that override kind of the naming conventions that are provided by Kubernetes. Let's say a replica set is called in Kubernetes a replica set and uh, they call it duplicates or something like that. And there are developer platforms that do these kind of things, um, oversimplify or they are really difficult to use or uh, don't follow best practices because they oversimplify. So uh, while developer platforms aim for you to have an easy onboarding experience, get things done as quickly as possible, some of them uh, will not actually allow you to build upon that. So usually you start with a simple deployment, a simple web set and service to access your deployment. And from there, you might want to add additional features that are available within the Kubernetes cloud native ecosystem that you will not be able to add to those platforms because they intrinsically, they limit you. That's how they designed and um, limiting, let's say. Um, and that's what we don't want. So when you use a developer platform, you want to keep an eye out on that. So overall, we want to allow our developers to easily deploy their applications as quickly as possible, have preview environments, be able to get things done without having to learn the nitty gritty details on Kubernetes. Now let's take a look at Octeto. So this is the website. You can either use Octeto Cloud or Octeto Enterprise. I've started using Octeto Cloud. Now they have a free version available and then you can upgrade from there. 
And this is basically how the website looks like. They have several different integrations. They are also used by several different companies across the space. <laughs> and yeah, they are really welcoming amazing company. So let's check out what their platform actually looks like. What I really like about this platform is that it's designed in a similar principle to how Siva Cloud is designed as terms of, in terms of its UI. So everything is really easily to find and to navigate. There are not uh, too many buttons. There are not too many options. Additionally, besides using the UI, you can also use the client. So you're not dependent on the UI. People have different interests. They have different, they learn differently. They use resources differently. And in this space, restricting people to just using the UI is, I think, a mistake. And that's not what Octeto has done. Octeto has a really comprehensive client. And we will take a look at that in a second as well on how to use the CLI. But their UI as well as their CLI is really easy to use amazing UX and to get started and to deploy your first application. So once you log in, you have here your different, well, you have your two main name spaces, your namespaces and then your settings. Now within settings, you have some setup configurations that you can make. Um, you have some integrations that you can add. For example, if you use a Helm registry, if you like to use Helm charts, then you can add the repositories here as well. Um, now you can add secrets that might be used within your deployments and here are your different plans for Octeto itself. Now, right now I'm on the developer pro free trial. So going to namespaces, if you've watched one of my previous videos on namespaces, you know that namespaces in Kubernetes are used to separate the different, let's say, areas within your Kubernetes cluster. So you can separate the different resources within your Kubernetes cluster into namespaces and by setting up different namespaces or by having this as like the namespace section, you can basically set up different environments for your developers here on this platform. Now, there are different deployment types. You can deploy either from Git directly. So let's say you have a Git repository with some manifests within, then you could use that. And that's what I'm going to use now with my Octeto example Git repository. I um, also have the link below so you can find the simple example that I basically used for this demo. Now you can also use a Docker Compose file. Now I've never, <laughs> to be honest, really used Docker Compose, but I know it's a great alternative and a lot of people from the ecosystem, also people who are not yet using Kubernetes are using Docker Compose. So this is a really smooth onboarding into getting your application then translated into Kubernetes resources. And like mentioned, you can also deploy from a Helm chart which we might look in, a, in another video at. If you're curious about that, comment below. So we want to deploy from Git and it's as simple as just select your application, select the branch that you want to use. Right now I only have the branch main here. Then you can add additional variables that might be needed within your deployment. Some variables that maybe your Kubernetes manifest depend on. Now in this case, I don't have any. Then I will hit deploy and it will just simply spin up my application. I will not have to do anything else. It will find within my Git repository my manifests folder and deploy that. Now, if I do not have a manifest folder, I will want to set up an Octeto uh, YAML file that basically specifies the deployment pipeline. Now, as you can see, it's right now booting up my Node application. It's a simple Node application. We will take a look at that in a second once this has finished processing. And now my application here is running and you can notice two things right away. Here's my Git repository. So I can just go ahead and open this up and I will have here my Git repository. Now here is the manifest folder of my deployment and my service that I want to use for this deployment. It's a simple Node.js application. So I only have an index.js file. That's all I have right now here. It's just spinning up an express server on port 8080 and then I can yeah, basically deploy through these manifests. Now Octeto will find them automatically. I will not have to do anything else. Now going back to the platform itself, oops, here we are. <laughs> we can then see an endpoint here. Now the endpoint kind of gives me a preview environment. So as you can see, it just says right now, hello world. Now let's jump over to the CLI and I will show you what else you can do through the CLI. As some of you might know, India has been really hit by the current situation around the world. There's a put out a tweet saying, hey, I'm currently not accepting any paid commercial content at the time. However, if you want to help and support a help organization within India, donate. I'm happy to create some content for you. Octeto generously reached out and actually donated 3,000 USD 
to a help organization to give India, as you can see here within the screenshot over there. <laughs> so thank you so much, Octeto. Thank you so much for watching this video because you make this possible as well. So thank you. You can install the Octeto CLI just by a simple bash command as well as through brew. So I just did brew install Octeto. And now if you didn't know that, brew also works on Linux. So you can also use it on Windows subsystem Linux, like I'm doing in this case on my Windows machine. Now I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that again. And then when I check Octeto, I will be provided with all the different options here to use the Octeto CLI. Now, something really nice, if I am within the directory, where I have my Docker file and all of my resources, I can use Octeto in combination with Docker. Now, you can use Docker and Octeto interchangeably to build your container images. So for instance, with this command, I can build a container image with Octeto and push it right away to the Octeto registry. However, before that, I should probably log in and that's done through Octeto and then just log in. And it will log me in, it will open, here we are. You can see it just opened on your window and it's like, hey, you're logged in now, awesome. So now, <laughs> since I'm logged in, I should be able to now build a container image and you will see how it's directly pushed to the Octeto registry. Now, as you can see, the image has been pushed to the Octeto registry under my username, under his Urlis, and this is the name of the image and the tag as well. So it's a similar, it's the same experience as using Docker, and you can see as smooth of an experience as I don't have to separately push the container image that I just built to the Octeto registry. It's done all in one go, and it's as easy as that. Now, next, I want to connect to the uh, Kubernetes cluster that has been used for my Octeto deployment. So as we see here, going back to Octeto, this is obviously, this application is obviously running somewhere. It's running on a Kubernetes cluster that Octeto has spin up for me. Now I want to connect to this Kubernetes cluster and I can do that through Octeto and then just namespace. And it will connect me to my environment. So as you can see here, this in my CLI specifies which Kubernetes cluster I'm currently connected to. Before I was connected to my Docker desktop Kubernetes cluster. Now I'm connected to Octeto, cloud octeto.com in my account Anais Urlis. So let's check out what's currently running there. We can see kubectl get all just in my default namespace. And we can see that we have here our replica set of two of my node application. And additionally, I have here my service. And now Octeto is automatically translating any service endpoint that I have so I can access at least a preview environment of my application. Now, if you're using load balancer or node port, it will automatically translate it into an ingress so you can also access your application from ex outside external of your cluster. So now I could also do just port forwarding to my service. Now I have here my deployment, my replica set, all of the resources that I basically specified within my two manifest files that I showed you earlier within my Git repository, right? We can use Octeto as well for our local development to easily see whether the changes that we make are then going to be reflected the way we want them in our UI, in our application. So we can go ahead and we say Octeto up and this will then spin up activate our development container. So it's spinning up a new container of our application where we can then edit our application. Ignore that it says here can you the demo, that's just where I took my example from basically. So while this is spinning up, as we can see right now here, when I open my application here, well, while I'm spinning it up, it's spinning up a new deployment environment where I can edit my application everything. As you can see, it's still, there's no output yet since it's still spinning, spinning it up. But once there is, now there's an output. Now, if I go ahead and I want to reload this, it says for phone found in my development environment here. Um, now we can see here all of the logs, which is really handy for developers. So you don't have to query any resources within Kubernetes. You just see all of the logs right here within the UI, which makes it super easy to use and to react to it while you're developing. So going back, it has now spin it up. We can see here the port forwarding localhost 8080 is used for the application, for the example, and then 9229 can be used for 
test environment. Now, if I look at localhost 8080, however, there won't be anything shown similar to the 404 error because the application in the test container here is not running yet. So if I say npm start to invoke the start script, which is just note, it's going to start up. The thing is, sometimes some of the packages are missing within the application in this container and then you would have to edit it again manually, like you would have to, for example, do npm install and the package name right here. Now we just spin it up with npm start and we can now reload our environments and it will say hello world. Now the nice thing is that I won't have to stop or start it if I make any changes to my application. So let's go ahead and make changes to the application. So instead of saying hello world, we say hello uh, beautiful people of the internet. Okay, so I'm going to save this right now. I've just saved it. We go back and you can see here, well, there's some requests, but let's go back to our application. We reload. Okay, it's not changing yet. So let's maybe restart the script. So it's actually starting our changes, it's using our changes, right? So now we can see it. Now we can see it reflected. You just have to restart it like a normal local development environment, right? So now you can see that these are the changes you want. So what you would do next is you would stop this, exit out of here, and then you would say um, Octeto, and then build. And you can build then the container image, and it will be pushed automatically to a registry, and it will be the container image in this case that I'm using for my example application will automatically update everything. And this allows you to have a really, really smooth development flow for your application to develop locally and then push the changes to the Octeto registry and it's automatically going to be deployed. Now this is it for today. I hope it was useful and gave you some insights into what developer platforms are as well as Octeto. If you have any comments, questions, please comment those below or join your community chat also linked below. The space is really inclusive. Everybody's welcoming. Ask your questions there. I also have a weekly DevOps newsletter where I share free online learning resources from across the space on a weekly basis right to your inbox. Make sure to subscribe. Also hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Your support would mean the world to me. I really hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.